Let's get rid of fucking everything. Don't care, don't care, don't care. Back up to minus five. Hello all, it's your special treat day today. Two standard Saturday videos in one day with your very, very sick Uncle Bouncy Bear, 95. Like, share and subscribe please. Thank you. Um, today we are playing the deck that I had originally planned to make for today, which is my Rafine deck at the minute. Um, I have been playing this for the last two days, and I've ranked up two tiers, I think. Maybe only one tier. I might have brought that down with playing weird wildcard decks, because I still don't have one for the Wednesday video planned yet. And it usually, like, ranks me down a whole tier. <laughs> um, <laughs> just trying to get something semi-workable cooking um but yeah today we're playing rafine um this this almost this exact deck i have all of the cards but i think i'm missing one of those and i think this used for rafine's tower and less um, i think it used less like other car wastes maybe uh, I think he used three Shipwreck Marshes, though. I can't remember. Anyway, it's like... I think it was on Tapped Out, or it might have been Arena Zone. Uh, this thing had the highest win rate, and was also in, like, I don't know, like 16% of the meta. Something like that. Which is pretty goddamn good. Um... Pretty good. Anything above like 55% win rate is like something that I'm gonna play. Unless it takes hours and hours and hours to do. But I'll still play it for a game. It's definitely worth crafting. I can certainly see why it's so hard to make this deck though. There's got a rare there, a rare there, four rares there, two rares there, two rares there, two mythics there rather, four rares there, two mythics, six, four mythics, four rares, uh, another rare, three more mythics, some rare land, some more rare land. Pretty much, I think there's like six cards in here that aren't. Uh, that aren't rares or mythics, <laughs> which is insane, and also why it works. Um, so, the main theme of this deck is Rafine. If you've been playing Standard, you must have seen Rafine at some point. It's three mana for a 1-4, and whenever he attacks, you get to draw a card and then discard a card, and if equal to the number of attacking creatures. So, uh, the best part about this is that is isn't draw, then discard, draw, then discard. It's draw... Like, if you're attacking with four creatures and Rafine's out, it's draw four and then discard four. Which is really good. It's really handy as well, because otherwise that would just take, like, friggin' ages. Um, and then you get to put plus one, plus one counters on target creature for each non-land card discard this way. Which is doubly really weird, because the, uh, like, proper meta decks that I've seen playing this run 27 land, I think. They maybe actually only run 26 land. But they run more land than I'd like to see, certainly. But I guess you need to get up to the big land to get the four-cost things down. But then it's like, okay, but you're not running anything above four, so, like, why bother? Then it's like, well, okay, running all of this, because you've got the connive, you want to be getting rid of some land at some point. You don't want to be, like, clutching onto... Um, you don't want to be clutching onto that one land when you drop it. Um, I mainly decided to play this because I played against this deck the other day, and um, he was playing in a way that I hadn't seen this deck play before, and it made complete sense. 
which is that he will use his second main phase. He will uh, attacking will be effectively his first main phase, and then his second main phase is where he gets all his stuff done because you've drawn and discarded a bunch of cards. So like, why not? There's nothing in here with haste, and there's pretty much nothing in here that pumps stuff just by playing it. So there's no reason to use the first main phase at all, really, other than to maybe play a Wandering Empire to buff something up by one. But that's pretty much all you're doing it for. Or maybe play an Urte, but you can still play that in combat anyway. You don't need your first main phase in this deck, pretty much. Um... Anyway, I'm not going to go through all this because that is like 50 freaking rares. You probably know what half this stuff does. I think the ones that stand out to me that you might not know are probably Malevolent Hermit, which lets you counter a non-creature spell, and you can play it, and then non-creature spells you control can't be countered. It's got Disturb 3, uh, and then it gets ex exiled when it dies, obviously. Having a 2-2 two -two flyer is pretty handy. Uh, Denik, who has lifelink, cards in graveyards can't be target spells or abilities, which is great when you're running underdog, because that can't be targeted. And then whenever one or more creature cards are put into graveyards from anywhere, investigate. This ability triggers only once each turn. If you put into a graveyard, exile them. He's got disturb four, and he turns into a flyer instead of a lifelinker, and a three two instead of a two three. I really like the artwork on it because it's he's like mirrored. It's it's weird. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're the only two cards that you probably haven't seen. Urte, I guess, is new-ish. He destroys stuff, and then its control draws a card, or it counters stuff, and then its control draws a card. With a 3-2 body on it, it's pretty good. The draw a card bit I don't really like, but there you go. Alright, enough waffle, let's get down to it. <clears throat> Grocknik. Um, I mean, that's good. We've got the, like, uh, three mana. I think, I guess we save that for turn two. Play a Shattered Sanctum on one. We could actually play a Jadar on two. Uh, the Denic Lifelink feels like it's going to be handy. I really wish I had a kill spell. Or, uh, Meat Hook. A hook would be really good. Obscurity Interceptor is not that great against this deck because they don't play that much crucial high power stuff. Yeah, I'll pay. I wonder how much removal and enchantment form is going to run because Denik might not actually have been that great in that sense. Of course, the Naturalist comes down. Could actually play a Rafine next turn and just try and get early damage in with lifelink get rid of one of these interceptors I think Oof, hook is good need land though uh, that's why he's running 26 like I need to draw a land next turn otherwise it's just not happening like green white enchantment aggro is insane like, he's got the combo now. <laughs> he just needs more enchantments. There we go. Is that a flyer? No, but it gives that 3-3 three, three a frickin' lifelink. <clears throat> no blocks. I need to keep a Rafine down. I also need to try into land to get this hook going. Um, what are we doing? We're attacking, I guess. Um, let's see if we can't make Danik big. Drawn into land, that's good. The Urte Resurrected's good as well. I think we'll be playing that, but I think we'll play it on... At the end of our turn. I think the Interceptor's probably not going to get the job done. Judar would be good after a hook as well. After have to discard two. 
like wedding announcements good. Um next. <laughs> okay. Uh want to destroy this now. Life link is no good for me. It just depends on the, uh, like, freaking another one. Seriously. <clears throat> if I hook for three next turn, that takes half his board out, though. Mm, no locks. Might as well get another card drawn with that. I think we might actually get rid of Rafine here. 5 6 with lifelink is probably big enough. Uh, can't actually hook this turn. I should have waited to play that land. Uh, we go all attack, and who are we picking? Rafine gets stuff in, but then it gives us life. So that's pretty good. Get rid of an underdog. And we'll get rid of a hermit. Uh, make disappear might be fun to hold up. Sh really should have waited for that land. We'll get rid of a Jadar. And one and only Jadar. But we gain eight life back. So we're feeling pretty happy. I just wish that that had trample. We can make disappear, whatever. Um, uh, that's got casualty one, yeah. Get rid of the Erte. I really don't want him playing that. Like, really don't want him playing that. That'll buff him up for three, and I'll get like ten in. It's just way too much. Thanks. You really shouldn't have tapped that out. That was a big old misplay on your part. I could even hook for two, actually. Okay. Hmm, let's look for two actually good. I mean I get I get the damage in right. So let's hook for two. Go all swing and get the life link in again. Uh don't need a cave and I've got two mana free, so I guess we get rid of the Rafine as well. Nice. Nice. Good game. He's not lost yet. Like, he's definitely not lost yet. We can make that disappear without the casual though. Like a 9-10 with lifelinks, nice. Thanks. Just get that as fat as we can. Uh, get rid of all three of those. And go in with one of them. GG. 11, 14 damage. Minus 7. Boom. Quick maths. That's how the deck does.
Boaz. 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 <laughs> Do not know how to pronounce that. Um, starting off with Rafine's Tower is really good. Into nothing, because the mana is awkward. But we play Rafine's Tower on one, and then I guess hold up the cut down in case of aggro. He's playing Fubble Fub. That was a really clutch draw that Adakar wastes. See, the Painland are quite good, but you don't want to run like friggin' 12 of them. For sure, Let's see if this dies. It does not die. That's good. Hold up a cut down and a march. Cut down and march are a pretty good pair, actually. Because you can just exile it to get an extra 2 damage in. Pass 2 attacks. My turn. Landy land. Swing in for 3. Okay. Holding up the Urte. I don't know why he wouldn't have done that before. Let's just counter that. He might have a... I was going to say he might have a counter spell for that. He gets to draw a card out of it, which is sad for us. And he might have a uh, board wipe now. Which is double sad. Yeah, depopulate. I still get to get the blitz in. Which is nice. Um, I think if I play Rafine now, he's just going to immediately die. So, might as well get some card draw. We're still holding up cut down on March of Sorrows 2. Um, okay. Hmm. Uh, we've got to make disappear. We could just do this again. Right? Like, I don't really care about my life at the min. The make disappear is probably going to go over any kill spell that he's got. Speaking of, well timed Wandering Emperor. See, that's why I didn't want to go over this deck, because there's just too much going on to even tell anyone about. It's like, it's not even four of each, it's like two of each. It's just a well-crafted, competitive meta deck. For... Uh, I don't have any protection. It's annoying. I think we go hook for none. Do I actually have the mana for that? Yeah. I've got four black. Hook for none. And we play the underdog, because otherwise I'm just bleeding dry. He's going to have a counter spell for that, right? I wonder if this is going to be like a hull break horror deck. There he is. Uh, I, uh, yeah, land awkward, land awkwardness. Really wish Rafine had um, not flying. Uh, haste plus one. Yep. Plus one. Um, play Rafine. See if he's got that one mana counter spell that doesn't exist. Play one of these. Yeah. I could have blitzed that, actually. Blitzing to take out the Emperor might have been good, because then he can't exile it. And then I guess we march for two, so at zero. Like, might as well keep the cut down, because there's nothing in our hand that's actually holding priority. That might have given him the okay that everything's safe, though, for him to play, like, a Leah next turn. But then, what's even got down here? Fateful Absence. So, I'm not really worried about a Leah. That's a card. Shouldn't have played that, that was really silly. 
It's not what this deck does, Bobby. It's just not what this deck does. Let's buff up the underdog, because he already wants to take the Rafine from me. Uh, cut down's not good. Adakar Waste isn't great. And Grasp the Judge. See if we can get half his life out of him. Nope, negate. And then he takes the Rafine. Still got his, like, five life going. I think this might just be his game, just because of the amount of sheer amount of cards that he's got in hand. Investigating is good for us, though. I remember this is card draw. He's going to lose a life if I blitz that anyway. Like, so that's nice. Make disappear is a real clutch draw. Black into underdog. What you got cooking? Again, I don't really care about my life. Uh, let's just make that disappear. The devious cover up, obviously. Whilst you have no mana in. Swing. I didn't need to swing, but hail. Lose a life from the hook. I get to draw a card, and I get one of these. I could have actually actually just blitzed him again. Unless he can take care of the hook or gain a lot of life, he's in trouble. Which is always nice. Underdog. Dissipate. Ah, that's fair. One of these. One of these guys. And swing with the 1-1. One, because one, we need it to die. If he blocks, he takes the damage. If he doesn't block, he also takes the damage. And then I get two more 1-1s. One, which, unless he's gaining life next turn, uh, might be the end of him. Swing. Let's see his life gain. Good game. Deluge. He's delusional. Haha. <laughs> that was a real nail biter at the end there. I wonder if Faithbound Judge is his win con. I wonder whether he's running Leer or Horror. I kind of want to. I wish you could ask people stuff. <laughs> you know, after a game. Yeah, it's a uh, hand. It's not a very competitive hand, but it's a hand we'll keep. Uh, please, someone remind me to play the Shipwreck March and not the Deserted Beach. Please, God. Add a car waste into a Tenacious Underdog. Blue into probably a Wedding Announcement. Let him... Um, that one. It's just so tense sometimes when you've got weird land. Play with fire. No, lightning strike. No, Kami's flare. No. The other one. <laughs> the artifact one. So maybe waiting. Blue, red. Anything could happen. Blue, red, black. Even more stuff could happen. Is this going to be like uh, Grixis? Um, Orkies, show me that play with fire. Bullet surge, alpha. Uh, I think we go wedding announcement because we want them to flip, and it is also card draw. Sometimes I need some card drawing really. I should have played the Kaio and drawn. That's a bit greedy. Because we need to get the land cooking against Corpse Appraiser deck. Yeah. 
Yeah, because he does that, and then he's got like eight freaking underdogs instead of us. What's he do again? Uh, when it enters, exile a creature card from graveyard. If card is put into exile this way, uh, look at the top three, then put one of those cards into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Okay, so that just exiles. And then he gets probably a graveyard trespasser, right? Um, cut down's not great to hold out. We could just... We could just start cooking with the wedding announcement. If I, yeah, if that was the plan, I should have held that back. I think we go for a Kaito. Kaito into some draw hope for a land. Hope for a black land as well, an untapped black land. That's what we need. I will also sell for a Rufine's Tower. Nope, Danik. Danik's not bad, because it gives us life. And we desperately, desperately, desperately need to cling to life this game. Like, freaking desperately. <laughs> need to cling to life and land and everything. We need to go over the top with him. It's just a graveyard. Corpse of Braze is pretty clutch, isn't it? One of those cards into your hand and the rest in your graveyard. I mean, it's like basically three mana, scry three, draw one. If you're running enough uh, enough creatures. This could be uh, Grixis Vamps. I think we go no blocks because I think I'd prefer to draw. That is just pathetic, isn't it? It's just absolutely pathetic. I want to cling to these as well. Um, because of the treasure dude. Yeah, that's called cool. Wild Man. I'm just doing it to draw. Come on, land. Any land will do. That will do. Uh, I guess Hermit first. Should have maybe played the Danik first. Does it matter? Not really. Also, I'm not sure whether cut down actually works on the Corpse Appraiser at the minute. I don't think that's how it works. Because I think it still has three toughness. It's just taken a damage, right? I think that's how it works. I don't know. I do not know, girl. Uh, but Denik's gonna be a pretty good beat stick for him. I guess he's wondering, like, what else is he gonna play, though? Um, yeah, decline. I'm fine having that in the graveyard. With Denik out as well. He's only got three cards left, and I've got five. Plus Denik's a 3-4. Forgot about the wedding announcement. It's been so long without land. I forget what turn it is. Come on, good buddy, good pal. Wonder what he's got. Probably another. What do you know? Who's it called? It. Village surge. Uh, you can sack an artifact to deal four with it. He'd have to sack the uh, Celestus for that, which is awkward. I do rate Voltage Surge. Um, especially if you're running Artifact. Uh, okay. Grasp it is. Probably another Corpse Appraiser, right? Knowing how... Uh, how the thingamajig goes. We can Wandering Emperor one of these away next turn if we need to. It's going both face. Do I just... Um, yeah, let's block. Effort. Not got that much to lose, though. A 2-2. Two -two. Erte. Does it destroy Planeswalkers? It does, but I get to draw a card, which could be land. Oh, there will be. It also could 
not be land, I guess. Uh, we can cut that down. Play a wedding announcement. We can play a wedding announcement and uh, underdog. That gets us creatures, which is fun. And that's buffed. So we've got a 2 2 to block the Urte and a 4 3 to block one of the corpse appraisers. Could have also played Danik, um, who's a 3 2 with flying, or the Benevolent Geist, which is 2 2. We've got a lot of options, just not a lot of mana to do with those, even though we're running frickin' 26 land. Like, yeah, it feels fine. <laughs> feels fine to me. <laughs> The Lonious M MC Stizzle. Well, that's pretty rough. <laughs> right? What's the second one do? Discard any number of cards and draw that many cards. Meh. 4-4 four, four Dragon's annoying. Like, for sure that's annoying. Play a Wandering Emperor. Deal damage to me. Hopefully it doesn't get countered. If he wastes a make disappear without the casual E, I'll be happy. I think he wants to keep that so that he can discard it though. Holding a cut down up's fun too. Like we'll definitely be exiling the corpse appraiser. Just so many options. Okay. Uh, decline. Yeah, because he's. I'd have to pay four for that, which isn't is not ideal. We're holding up two cutdowns, so that's pretty good. The fact that corpse appraiser gets over cut down. Like A and that <laughs> Like A really annoys me And B really freaking annoys me I wish that was a tapped creature Can hold up Enough to play Wandering Emperor again I need a flyer to block the 4-4 as well See I just don't have the land to do any of this I wonder what he'll get rid of. It's gotta be the underdog, right? Is that a Denik? Okay. Cool by me. Come on, White Land. White Land would be absolutely clutch. Save me a life. He's gonna do a flippy flip. That would be a really good move. Oh, that's so irritating. So irritating, that's a freaking 3-3 three, three as well. Whoever made some of these cards has just been smoking crack. I swear to God, sometimes. My turn. Um, hmm. 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 And the cutdowns, but like, why bother? You can play the Hermit, but then I can't play the Emperor. I guess we just wait and see. And just say bye to the Underdog and the Hermit. We've got two 3 3 blockers, so when he swings in with the Dragon, we play Wandering Emperor, kill the Dragon. And we can go block block on the graveyard gluten glutton. Pash to attach. The fact that he's holding a card up really freaking annoys me. Just really freaking annoys me. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't know. Two blocks. Let's go double block. Two blocks. See what he's going to play. 
I could have played the Obscura Interceptor actually. In fact, it might be better to play that now. Again, depends what he plays. That's going to be a land, right? Is he going to move this card and draw? That's one problem with this deck, is that it's mid-range, so it just takes a while some games. Mid-range versus mid-range is like a battle of wills, though. Control is like a staring match. Get rid of this cut down as well, which is mighty fine. Uh, I don't want to use... I don't really want to use use that. <laughs> that puts us in uh, into dangerous territory. <coughs> Is what that does. That's uh, a pretty good draw. We keep the grasp. Uh. Mic check. I don't think he's holding priority on anything. And we're going to get six back from this. Uh, I think it's Wandering Emperor next turn. We hope. Hope and pray. If he's got a kill spell for the Interceptor, it will be mildly annoying. I'm hoping he's just got like counter spell, counter spell, or like counter spell land. Or like a lightning strike would be fine. If he has two play with fire, for the Interceptor. I can actually play the Wandering Emperor. Uh, okay. And try and buff that up. <laughs> A good thing about the Celestis is it is card draw, kind of. Uh, he had a negate. He's holding a negate up. I bet he's got double negate, hasn't he? Fast attacks. Uh, let's play an Emperor. Ooh, let's see what you had. Another negate. Finally, I'm home. Uh, four four samurai wouldn't do it this turn. In fact, actually, no, it would. Yeah, make samurai deploy underdog with blitz. I think that's still just enough. Fiend's Tower, where were you? Where were you friggin' 20 minutes ago? You dick. Blitz. I swear to god, if he's got an instant that deals 5 damage to target fucking. To target player, that would just absolutely chew through me. Suckers in. Okay, I can cut one of these down though. Oh no, cancel. Uh, I can't wait till blocks auto pay. Uh, so he blocks the 7 5 and then he takes 12. And I get 7 life back, which is real nice. Please God, don't have don't have an exile all cards. Whatever you do, do not have an exile. <laughs> Everything card. <laughs> don't do it. Don't you dare do it. We're so close to finishing, buddy. Do not have a farewell.
That was a fucking nail biter again. Ganja Alex. Okay. Uh four one's actually pretty good in this variety. Um Black or white. I guess we play the underdog first, so I need black. Cause these are colourless. Oh, well, they can't add colours. Uh Cave of Qualos. Uh -huh. Let's see what's behind the concealing curtain. Yeah. So, play one of them. Get the colours going. Uh, I could play a Denik, try and get some life gain in. Could play a wedding announcement, try and get that going. Could play a Kaito and draw then discard, but I'd like to keep all my cards at the minute. Create an unblockable ninja man. I think wedding announcement and then just pass. Because that's uh, two mana to make it a 3 3. And Underdog can block that. He can power concealing curtain up and take something, which is annoying. Uh, I just discard it, so he's probably going to pick the Kaito. It's just irritating. If he picks the Denik, I can just play it next turn for like whatever. Yeah. And the Scepter's good. And Receptor is real good. Could just play Denik next turn. TBF. Ugh, oh, double frickin' Interceptor. Um, let's go no attacks. Staring match. Let's get the maximum number of 1-1s one that turn into 2-2s two that we can, right? Obscure Interceptor is either going to hit something or it isn't. But I can play it in response to him attacking anyway, so like, whatever. Uh, spell. Right. Spell. Not ability. Read the card, Bobby. God. Ooh. I really want him to attack and then kill something. No attacks. Are you fucking kidding me? Play an interceptor, I guess. Or oh, play. Owie. When you've dealt more damage to yourself than he has. I guess he's holding up a grasp, but he wanted to see what that was first. Uh, could get rid of a Denik, actually. But then Lifelink's good. Could get rid of another Interceptor or a uh, Land. Uh, let's just get rid of Land. Maybe hold an Interceptor up next turn. Depends what we draw. Grasp is good. Uh, we could play Denik, hold up Grasp. That's pretty good. If he plays a shieldred, I'm definitely intercepting it and then just going all swing. Because that's a lot of damage. Fucking lol. Uh, we'll drop the Danik off, yeah. Let's just get that back into your hand there, but nicely tucked away. <coughs> Let's play Danik. We've got Grasp held up still. He has to hook for three to take out my entire board, which 
is 5 mana. Do we grasp now or later? I guess we get rid of the Revealing Eye, right? That's like a big wave to match, right? 6, 10, that's 40 damage, and I go back up to 21. Uh, 26 even. It's hard to beat. I mean, this play is definitely the hook. What is it? Does he gain life from that? Or does he, uh... Yeah. Let's do that. Cut down is not great. I guess it's kind of okay though. 4 3 Hasty Boy. Can't beat it, particularly. Him having a hook isn't, isn't that great for us though. Okay. So you got some of the exile that oh no. Uh yeah. Fair. He loses one life from that. And I can also do it again, which is just just su such content. You can just redraw my entire hand, right? We've got a hook and a cut down for every plays down in the rail. Ooh. Oh no, not my land. And you think you can win. <laughs> we all have things we I mean, we're pretty much set for every color, so it doesn't really matter what I get rid of here. I get rid of a cut down. Um, let's get rid of a planes. Black's pretty good. Underdog. Swing at the Liliana. I really wish she was a 4 3 now. Um, We could actually just make that disappear. I could have played uh, Underdog again, actually. I would have hold up, make disappear, and cut down, though. Uh, okay. Uh, guess I go for like a blue or a, a black. Does it matter? <laughs> Not particularly. I guess he's siphoning out his um black manas. I'm tired of your secrets. Let's hook for zero. That way we're matching him. Let's just get this Liliana down. I don't want him taking my permanence from me. <coughs> Particularly. If I had one more land held up, this would be a pretty good hand. But then again, I don't think he's going to have anything that make disappear isn't going to... Or is going to hit. Uh... Make disappear is not great at the minute. I actually prefer the cut down. Yeah, boy, shut down. Next, you go here. You go here, and we get to draw cards from that, which is obviously clutch. Ooh, let's discard it and play that. We've got the Interceptor, which is kind of useful. Again, if you play something for 5 mana, but can I hear? <laughs> nah. Oh, oh, oh. oh <laughs> I, I think I just absolutely fucking ejaculated at my fucking play there. 
Let's get rid of a cut down. Let's invoke despair. The fact to his hand. Oh my god, good game. It's beautiful. Let's get Rafine down. Let's get Danik down. Let's go all swing. Let's make the interceptor a big boy. Let's get rid of fucking everything. Don't care, don't care, don't care. Back up to minus five. And we're back for the post-game wrap, boys. Uh, this deck is meta. This deck's great. It's just, it's like playing a control deck that is also aggro. I think the tendency with it is to probably play um, more control. It's basically a game of put more stuff down, draw more cards, and gain more life than your opponent more than it is deal more damage to your opponent than he can deal to you uh, really uh the like i haven't played a game with a mirror of this deck really but it, it's it's good obscure interceptor is if it didn't have its connive ability i think it would still be in here because of the lifelink and the flash it just, this is just the culmination of some guy taking hours and hours and hours of playing stuff, tinkering around with the deck to make it work properly. Even though, like, 26 land, like, who would think to put, in what is basically a connive deck, put 26 land into a fucking thing? It's crazy. Even Denik, Denik's just been, like, out of meta for so long, and yet he's in here. Like, he's in here. Even Jadar. Jadar is in here because he gets another attacker in for a Rafine so you can swing for, you know, that extra that extra connive ability. Getting, like, a 3-3 three, three Jadar in on, like, turn three is pretty funny. Freaking Jadar, man. <laughs> I love this deck. I'm going to keep playing this deck. Uh, it's just so well crafted um i have to i have to link the deck list that i found this from really because it isn't mine uh it's just on some tapped out form i don't know who who even played it he's probably some pro who's qualified unlike me <laughs> but there we go i've had a lot of fun playing this and i hope you've had a lot of fun watching this and if you've got 50 rares spare i'd highly recommend crafting it to be fair, if, uh, I don't know, you probably got some of these lands lying around. Uh, if you got four Rafines, <laughs> if, most most people would have, like, one of each of these, surely, right? You just kind of pick them up as you go. You can put more Jadars in, it, it's great. But yeah, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I've been Bouncy Bear. This has been a lovely Standard Saturday video. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.